Uh-oh, time to get rowdy with the Galaxy. The defending MLS champs invite the South Bay out for a good time, and the sports desk learns how to roll with some of the wildest fans out there. Back in the prep world, things are up and running in league play, and somebody puts on a pioneer clinic with a big win to hold their spot early in the league season. And we talk about sportsmanship and the teams behind the highlights all the time here. Meet some ladies whose success is just as much about a weekly tradition as it is their work on the court. Scores, highlights, and some quality time on the South Bay sports scene with the Sports Desk. What's up guys, Juan Hernandez here to bring you another week on the South Bay Prep Sports scene. We're excited to have you, so let's just jump right into it. Los Angeles is a great place to live for the restless sports fan. With eight professional franchises all in our little gridlocked corner of the world, you're always just an hour's worth of traffic away from catching a live event. But here in the South Bay, we love to brag about never needing to leave the beach cities. I mean, why would you, right? Lucky for us, there's plenty of opportunities to, as we learned, stand in the stands, lose our voices, and spread a little galaxy love. And we didn't even need to jump on the freeway to do it. What's up everybody, Juan, coming to you from the Stub Hub Center, home of the LA Galaxy, where the defending MLS champs have invited the entire city of Torrance out for fan appreciation night. Now, the Galaxy have three main support groups here for home games. The Galaxians, the Angel City Brigade, and right behind me, the Riot Squad. They're loud, they're rowdy, and of course, they all like to have a grand old time. And if you ask any one of them, they're all gonna tell you that they're the biggest fans that the Galaxy have. So, we're on a mission tonight. I'm rocking my David Beckham lid. I got my Herbalife Galaxy jersey on because we are about to find out what it takes to hang with the best of the best in the StubHub Center. Thanks, Cosmo. How you doing down here today? So-so? Here's the deal. Here's the deal. We're running around the StubHub Center. We are on a mission today to find the LA Galaxy's number one fan. I, you? I was going to ask you to unselfishly point to somebody or tell me where I can find the LA Galaxy's number one fan. Who is it? Cosmo over here tells me that you are the Galaxy's number one fan. Absolutely. Yes, it's right. We are the number one. It's 1996. So you, you're one of the original people been out here this whole time. You're sitting midfield. You got your jersey signed. Who, who here signed your jersey? Everybody. The tank, Tanque Hurtado, Cienfuegos, Kobe Jones, Jorge Campos. So you guys are the Galaxians, as your buddies were saying back here, the premier well, Galaxy supporter squad, right? We're the pretty much original supporter group since 96, way before anybody, ACB, Riot Squad. We're pretty much here with the Galaxy. Lows, we win, we lose, tie, we're always here for a Galaxy. Why don't you want to be a Galaxian is the question. Who wouldn't want, guys, who wouldn't want to be a Galaxian? Let's get one more cheer over here, guys, one more. We got one, did you run out of cheers? We got one more. There it is. When you're hanging out in the middle of the riot squad, what are the main rules that somebody has to follow in order to hang with, uh, with the crowd out here? Always cheer, never sit down, and always be loud. Cheer. This literally goes on for 90 minutes? Yes, it does. 90 minutes. 90 full minutes till the whistle blows. If you stop cheering, does anybody kick you out of the riot squad? No, they just yell at you. So, what did we say all night? It's City of Torrance Fan Appreciation Night, and sure enough, we're in the City of Torrance section. I'm here with Mike and Kathy, two Woo! lovely Torrance residents. Mike, hard-hitting question here for you. Are you having a good time at San Fan Appreciation Night? Having a great time. I take it this is a family event for you all, yeah? Yes. Uh, we've come out, what, 10, 10 times this year? Okay, so you guys are some pretty hardcore fans, yeah? yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
As you can see, the city of Torrance represented very well tonight. We're all having a grand old time out here in the stands. Mike, Kathy, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the season. Enjoy the playoffs, right? Yeah, Go Galaxy. all the way to MLS Cup. Three years in a row? Three years in a row. I'd rather live nowhere else in this world. Uh, you know, I'm living in, by the beach and playing for one of the, the greatest teams in MLS history, so uh, you get the, most of, the best of both worlds. You've got it made in the South Bay, don't we? It's not too bad. <laughs> What do you think? Successful night tonight? You helped me find the Galaxy's number one fan. Did you have a good time? Time for the playoffs? Are we ready to go? There it is. Cosmo's excited. I'm excited. We had a good time tonight. Nobody stress. Cosmo messed up my hair a little there, but I did recover. All in all, you can tell we had a little bit of fun at the StubHub Center, so thanks to the Galaxy for inviting us out. The Galaxy and the Earthquakes tie right there secured LA's playoff bid for 2013, so if you want to jump in the stands with the Riot Squad like I did, you might get the chance. The Galaxy postseason starts this week on the road against Seattle, opening round in the hunt for a three-peat. They're a very familiar crew around Torrance, the LA Galaxy, a big part of the South Bay sports community, especially youth sports, and for those of you that just can't get enough football or the Galaxy themselves, there's always camps, tournaments, and events of all kinds going down at the LA Galaxy Soccer Center right here in Torrance. Clint Mathis, an American soccer legend, head of the Galaxy's youth camps, working one-on-one -on -one with Torrance's future MLS stars. You saw AJ De La Garza there a minute ago. We've seen him at the Soccer Center training from time to time. Used to live in Torrance. Year-round leagues, you name it, they've got it. So if you haven't been there yet, well, now you have to go. Okay, everybody. Break number one of the week, time to get into the local scores. The Saxons defending their Pioneer League championship while a Bay League squad makes do on a goal they set back in 2012. I'm going to see Crested. I'm not going to tell you right now. Stick around for a few minutes and I'll tell you who, who when we get back. You always made sure I brushed my teeth. You told me that smart was cool. You always told me to dream big. To all of those parents who took the time to make raising their children their most important job, we'd like to say thank you. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thanks mom and dad. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. We are this close. We are this close. To Tirek Mordes. We're this close. This close to making history. This close. Of all one team team. One team, team. We are this close. We are this close. This close. This close to changing the world. We are this close to making sure no child suffers a crippling, crippling disease ever again. We are this close to making history. We are this close to ending polio. This close to ending polio. We're this close. This close. This close to ending polio. This close. We are this close to ending polio. All we need is you. All we need is you. All we need is you. Is you. We are this close. This close. If we don't act now, we may lose this chance forever. Help Rotary make history at endpolionow.org. Hey there, Torrance. Welcome back to the Sports Desk. I promised you prep sports. I'll give you prep sports. A year ago, Mike Juarez was a freshman. Didn't look like a freshman at 6'2", 200 pounds, but he was in fact a freshman on the hottest offense in the South Bay. He watched then quarterback George Hernandez run circles around Pioneer League defenses and toss the pill for a mere 4,000 yards and somewhere in the ballpark of about 60 TDs en route to a CIF championship game appearance. Now, as the Saxons' new quarterback, it's safe to say Mickey Juarez and the rest of the North High football team inherited some pretty big shoes to fill. Six weeks into the season now, Tamar Latta discovers how an underclassman and the team right behind him are finding their own groove. North High football players and cheerleaders celebrated a 42-21 homecoming win over Lawndale. We, we expected Lawndale to be pretty much the improved team that they showed tonight. They, they've, they've done really a nice job of getting better this season running the ball, throwing the ball defensively as well. And uh, I think we prepared extremely hard and we are extremely focused after last week getting our first league victory. And uh, we just wanted to keep it going in league. So kids were, were dialed up tonight. 
a young, inexperienced team who struggled at the beginning of the season seems to be finding their identity. Everybody's just, we're coming together and we're just practicing, practicing harder and harder as each week goes. And we just, we're just getting better and better. So all everything the coaches are teaching us, we're just, all of us are coachable, basically. And we're just, just getting better. One of the youngest rookies on the team is controlling the offense. He's great. He's only a sophomore. He's got a long way to go. He's a great player. He's a valuable asset to this offense. He's a, a running weapon and a threat in the air. We know he's got that ability, and it's just a matter of time. And he's a young guy still, just a sophomore. And so he's, he's had to get comfortable back there and, and starting to show what he can do. The sophomore quarterback delivered an impressive performance on Friday night. He finished the game with two touchdowns and 295 all-purpose yards. He was really effective and efficient. He ran the ball well. He threw the ball nicely. We had a, a handful of drops, but he uh, was putting the ball on the money and uh, just got comfortable and set his feet and, and read the defense, and so we're proud of his efforts. It was a great – I just give a great thanks to my own line and my receivers for making the plays. And like, It wasn't just me out there, but it was all my uh, – Just it was a team thing, and linemen did their job, and I just do what coaches taught me and just whatever, whatever it is, just I have to just do it. The defense didn't go unnoticed, holding Lawndale to just 21 points. Defense performance overall was great. Like, I, there's nothing like defense. We came out uh, a little slouchy on the first half, but then we just picked up and just no one, it's just Lawndale couldn't do anything else. The Saxons moved to 4-3 and three and hope to continue their winning ways next week against El Segundo. From North High, I'm Tamara Latta, reporting for the Sports Desk. Thanks for that, Tamara. Taking a quick look over at some other Pioneer League teams, Torrance takes on the preseason league favorite El Segundo and falls in a close one. The Tartars jumped out to an early first quarter lead with two TDs. The second half, completely different story, managing just three points. And the Spartans get a monkey off their back. By this point in the season, it's probably starting to look like an 800-pound gorilla, though. First win of the season crossed off their list. South High over Centennial in a low-scoring affair. 8-6. to six. Looks like one of those old AFL scores from the 60s. Stout D all around earns the mean green, a 1-1 one one Pioneer League record. Sitting next to Torrance, while North's win lifts them atop the standings, defending last year's uh, league crown. And I know you're asking while you look at the top of that board, North and Gundo going to duke it out this week at North High so somebody can take a solo spot at the top of the Pioneer League standings. Torrance's lone Bay League squad also doing their thing on Friday night. Among the many storylines for the West Warriors this fall was simple. How would they fare in the toughest stretch of the season against Miracosta, Redondo, PV, and Peninsula? We've talked about it a bunch. Well, one of last year's three losses officially avenged. The Warriors come through big time against the Redondo Seahawks. Redondo manages just a single garbage time touchdown. This one was West all the way. They blow it open in the second quarter and took a 23-0 lead into the half. Plenty of time to get some backups in the game as things close. So the Warriors hoping to be well rested now as they take on defending CIF and Bay League champs PV this week at home. We'll be there. And of course, we couldn't forget about the other Warriors in town. Just when things looked like they were on the right path for Elko's football squad to lead a major bounce back year, their field general, Cole Webb, went down for the year with a knee injury. In the weeks since, it's been a scramble to get the entire team moving forward without Webb. And as our Jenny Phillips found out this weekend, no better time to buck up and make some plays than with the number one team in the nation, Riverside, coming to town. We pick it up in the second. Riverside up 14-0. Skylar Howard hits Harold Mobley for the 26-yard touchdown. Two-point conversion is good, and the Tigers ahead 22-0. Elko shut out in the first half. Third quarter, Riverside ahead 31-3, and Elko finally gets it going offensively. Kendall Sparks finds the end zone with an eight-yard TD run, 31-10 Tigers. Warriors keeping the momentum alive in the fourth. Martin Booker with a two-yard TD rush, Elko making it a two-score game, down just 31-17 now. Tigers respond immediately, though. Howard hits Kenny Torrance for a 65-yard touchdown, extending Riverside's lead to 38-17 and crushing Elko's chances of a comeback. Final score to this one, 48-25. Despite the loss, though, the Warriors are confident about their play and what it means for the rest of the season. Uh, you really have nothing to lose against these guys. I mean, the number one team in the nation for a reason, and you just got to come out here and let it rip. We know what we practiced for all week long, so that's what we did. After the quarterback change, there seems to be a little bit of a change in the direction that the season has been going. How comfortable do you feel with Aaron under center? I mean, I feel real comfortable after this game. You know, he's, his problem at first was like he, he didn't know when to take keep the ball, but you saw this game, he did 
perfect. I mean, you couldn't ask for him to do anything more. Yeah, Aaron got a lot better. This game, he played good. I, I was comfortable with him this game. He threw a good, lot of good passes, came out strong. Now we just got to get our defense together. That was a big team he played, so we, hang, we hanged in. With the loss, the Warriors' record now falls to 4-3. and three. However, if they win out, they will make a bowl game. Now, with the way that quarterback Aaron Shockey played tonight, both coaches and players seem very confident of that. From El Camino College, I'm Jenny Phillips for the Sports Desk. You heard it there. Got to win out. With the Warriors' toughest regular season opponent behind them now, they can focus on crossing them off one game at a time. One more home game and two on the road. Elko gets their first crack at it with a visit from College of the Desert this week, closing out the regular season at Citrus and Mount Sac. We, on the other hand, will be sitting tight in the South Bay with the rest of the Torrance schools. One team in particular is going to open up their doors and give us a little secret to success that has nothing to do with practice drills and cardio. Nope, the sports desk. Carb loads after the break. One of my biggest passions in life is animals. That's why I've worked with Morris Animal Foundation for over 40 years. Morris Animal Foundation is a world leader in helping animals live longer, healthier lives. Like my favorite, dogs, of course. Well, maybe kitty cats are the best. I also like horses. Some of my best friends are apes. Elephants, elephants are so wonderful. And who wouldn't want to cuddle up with a tiger? Who oh, am I kidding? I love them all. The point is, Morris Animal Foundation is giving animals a healthier tomorrow. You can too. Just show your support at morrisanimalfoundation.org. It's all about a healthier tomorrow. And at my age, I'm all about that. To help cats, dogs, horses, and wildlife live healthier lives, visit morrisanimalfoundation.org, where we are advancing science that will create a healthier tomorrow for animals. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Sports Desk. Time to jump over to the Torrance volleyball scene with North High and Bishop Montgomery facing off in a non-league matchup. North in the hunt to repeat as Pioneer League champs, while Bishop Montgomery... While always competitive and still chocked full of talent, is finding its bearings under first-year coach Keegan Featherstone. Reyna Ale out at North High, Saxons in the Knights with a little break from Pioneer and Del Rey League action. Bishop Montgomery and North Torrance met up Thursday night for an exciting non-league matchup to honor former Torrance High athlete Kim Blankenship. You know, the Kim Blankenship tournament is an honor of Kim Blankenship, a Torrance High multi-sport athlete and volleyball player. Uh, she ended up going to LMU and playing out there and uh, passed away at a very young age. And uh, Nathan Jones, coach over at Torrance, and her family were really close, and so we decided to create this tournament uh, with all the Torrance schools. So it was nice to have a nice match, an exciting match, uh, and kind of honor her and uh, raise a little money for her scholarship. The Saxons offense has been their strength all season, but blocking was the team's focus for this game. Our focus was just to win every play. Uh, we worked on blocking this whole week, but it didn't really show this match. We definitely talked about working on our block. We knew they had some real big hitters, uh, you know, and so we worked on that pretty much all week in practice. So I thought the girls played real good defense tonight, and that just went hand in hand with our offense. Then. Um, they had really quick sets to the outside, so we need to work on more blocking. And our, our, our offense is really, really good, so we're not worried about that. We're just working on blocking and our service seat passing. The birthday girl, Sabrin Roberts, led the team with 15 kills, 9 digs, and 5 aces. Senior Tawny Lua Falamana added 10 kills. Taylor Rudine's 5 kills in a row sparked a Game 3 comeback for the Knights, but it was too little, too late. North won 29-27. Rudine ended the game with 13 kills and 8 digs. Tonight was the first night that we were down 0-2 and actually continued to battle in the third game, which I hadn't seen in the beginning of the season with this team, so that again is improvement. Um, every day they're getting better. Once we got kind of a couple good plays, plays that more than one play in a row, um, I think they started to get that fire back that I've seen the last few matches uh, for our league games. And so 
once that happened, our bench is going crazy, then, then that is momentum. And they get fired up when they play loose and they have fun. That's when we're at our best. North came out on top to make their mark in the Kim Blankenship Tournament. Bishop returns to league play at LaSalle, while North battles Torrance in a Pioneer League matchup. This is Raina Ale reporting for the Sports Desk. Thanks for that, Raina. Keeping things in the Pioneer League with the Saxons' heaviest competition, we get a look at the squad beyond the highlights and the scores we share every week. Fans typically only get to see the end product of practices and off-season off training. They say chemistry is the most important characteristic of any winning team. I say it's pretty darn easy to have chemistry when you just win. Either way you look at it, the state ladies of South High seem to have it all figured out. Haley Outen has that story. Hey, thanks, Juan. Have you ever wondered what the South High girls volleyball team is doing for team bonding the night before a game? Let's go inside and check it out. We usually do this probably every Monday before a game. We get together at somebody's house, usually like probably a senior's house, and um, you know, we just have dinner and just like talk about like what's coming up and like what we've been doing and you know like catch up from over the weekend. Well, I just like to decorate for different seasons, so it's really fun to have people over around each season and then I know all the girls love it and I make a really good chocolate chip cookie that they always tell me they love. Just being, all, we're all pretty close on the team and it's just fun because we're all in one big friend group so it's kind of fun to hang out with everyone and you know discuss what's been going on lately. And lately off the court these Spartans have been talking about one hot topic in particular. Well, right now we're talking about our homecoming dresses because we have homecoming this weekend and we're talking about what shoes we're gonna wear, what color our dress is. But going back to volleyball, these team bonding nights seem to have a main theme. To eat carbohydrates <laughs> to get ready and just to bond with each other. Usually pasta. I think it's good for the carbs, you know, so you have the energy for the game. Probably just Alfredo, fettuccine Alfredo. <laughs> um, lately we've been having a lot of pasta, but um, we kind of switched it up tonight and we had chicken. A lot of carbohydrates. We probably ate a lot of cookies just now. <laughs> Even though carbs, pasta, and a little dessert here and there are bringing these girls together, these team bonding nights go further than the house. They show up when it's important on the court. Yeah, I think we all kind of come together as a team while we're here and everyone's kind of in one place at one time and we kind of have to get along. We're really close with each other so that helps and we, I don't know, we get along really well and it helps when we play and you can like see it. I, mean, I think it helps a lot on the court and off the court being friends um, in school like you see each other and you know you have more in common because you know the person better than you know if you just see them once or twice a day at practice. And it's parents like Kristen who go out of their way to help these Spartans create memories because she too sees the positive effect great food and good laughs can bring. I just see them just really connect on the court. Um, it, it shows like our last few games too. They really are connecting and they, um, they just all are really excited and happy to play with each other. From Torrance, I'm Haley Outen for the Sports Desk. Did you see all that? Apparently pasta is the team food. Kind of jealous Haley was invited to dinner and not Juan. You hear that, girls? But I did, however, get an invitation to grub with the West Warriors. We plugged it last week for the Warriors Boosters, one of their many fundraising efforts to support Warrior squads going down November 2nd. More carbs, maybe some leftovers if I'm lucky. And hey, since we're in the mood of inviting ourselves all around town, when you're excited to have us over, Here's how you can get a hold of the sports desk. Facebook, the newest addition to our internet outreach, facebook.com backslash the sports desk TV. If you're a dinosaur and you don't have Facebook, well, you're welcome to say hey too. Just give us a call anytime and fill us in on any sports stories around Torrance. And that's gonna be it for us everybody today. Thanks for hanging with us for another week. We will see you next time.